Could we see a brand new super jumbo jet return to our skies? We think it's certainly possible and to understand why we need to look back in time to the dawn of the jumbo jet, the 747 and what made it so popular. The queen of the skies, a true aviation icon recognised worldwide as the jumbo jet. Designed in the 1960s, the 747 was created to carry more passengers than ever before in comfort and style. Thanks to Pan American Airways committing to 25 units at launch, Boeing was able to continue development of the double-decker aircraft, with the first commercial flight taking place in January 1970 between New York and London. The 747 was designed to be more efficient than its competitors and the wider cabin combined with more headroom made it a huge hit with the passengers. The increased range and capacity over its rivals allowed airlines to reduce their operating costs by carrying more passengers on fewer flights. The aircraft was a huge success, responsible for pioneering long-haul travel, selling over 1,500 aircraft during its 54-year production run. It wasn't until 1990 that a Challenger was announced in the form of the Airbus A380. Airbus planned to capitalise on the 747 success by providing yet more capacity to the airlines. And on an all-economy configuration, the A380 could hold 250 more passengers than the 747, meaning companies could squeeze in yet more passengers to meet that growing demand. However, this quickly became the downfall of this mammoth of the skies. As aviation started to shift towards more fuel-efficient, eco-friendly designs, the smaller twin-engine aircraft started to dominate the long-haul routes. These smaller aircraft reduced the need for people to travel down to big hubs to fly long-haul, as they could operate out of more local airports with smaller runways. And given the choice, passengers would prefer to fly direct from their local airport rather than connecting, which reduced the load on these huge hubs. The sheer capacity of the A380 meant that if too many seats were empty, it would quickly become unprofitable. And with passengers choosing to fly direct on aircraft such as the A330, the 787, the A350, and now even the A321 XLR, this brought about the cancellation of the A380 project in 2021, with only 234 aircraft delivered. That's substantially less than the 747 it was designed to compete with. But in 2020, the aviation industry was hit harder than anyone would ever have expected. The world halted as the COVID pandemic swept the globe. The public health emergency reduced air travel by up to 90% and the airlines that survived were forced to completely reevaluate their future coming out of the pandemic. Gone were the days of cramming as many passengers as possible into an aircraft, and airports were not as eager to invest in accommodating the larger gates required for the A380. The need for supercarriers like the A380 and the 747 seemed to be coming to an end, being replaced by more fuel-efficient, convenient and cost-effective narrow-body aircraft. These aircraft have a lower per trip cost than the Super Jumbos, and as they can operate from smaller airports and have less seats, they are easier to fill in the down season. This paired with the continuous development and improvements makes them the perfect choice for the modern aviation fleet. The A321LR has a range of up to 4,500 nautical miles, which is more than enough to cover the transatlantic routes made popular by their predecessors. For the longer flights, twin-engine efficient aircraft such as the A350 and the 787 were more than suitable transporting the passengers in comfort whilst being more reliable and cheaper to operate for the airlines. We have also seen a huge leap forward in engine technology, with the latest engines providing over four times the amount of thrust compared to those used on the 707s for example, which means airframes these days are more than suitably handled by two engines. This paired with the increased reliability of the powerhouses led to a relaxation of regulations allowing twin-engined airframes to fly further away from destination airports with the introduction of ETOPS. So what's changed with the new engines? One of the biggest and most important advancements is the increase in fuel efficiency. And one way this is being achieved is by increasing the bypass ratio 
which in simple terms increases the quantity of air flowing through the bypass fan section of the engine and this increases the pressure of the air entering the engine. A better bypass ratio is what we're seeing across the board in newer airliners and to modern standards the A380 has plenty of room for improvement as the likes of the Trent 900s among other engine options used on the Super Jumbo have a much lower bypass ratio than those of the Trent XWBs and Gen X counterparts. Could a new engine option be the solution for the A380? Well, Emirates President Tim Clark was asked about this when discussing a next generation A380 aircraft. And he said, we've got close to getting the Neo done, which I still believe has a place today, post COVID in the 2025 timeframe. So it's clear that the A380 operators in the world would be invested in a new generation Super Jumbo. But haven't we already seen a modern Super Jumbo aircraft? The Boeing 747-8 was the final design of the Queen of the Skies. She featured the Gen X engines, the same as the 787 Dreamliner, which are incredibly efficient and reliable. The 787-8 even had composite wings with the efficient curved upswept design. And it really was, in 2011, as modern as it gets from when it was certified to fly. But the Dash 8 production run lasted less than 12 years, with the final airplane being delivered to Atlas Air in January 2023. This was the end of the 747, with an impressive 54-year production run, and it was responsible for building 1,574 aircraft. So is having four engines the only problem here? Today we're seeing skyrocketing demand for air travel across the globe and the aviation sector is recovering from the COVID pandemic. Airplanes are getting progressively bigger and the airports and airways are filling up as passengers are returning to traveling. Manufacturers are constantly looking for ways to increase their capacity with airlines such as Lufthansa, British Airways and Emirates all returning their jumbo jets to the sky. So it's clear that there's still a gap in today's market for these super jumbos. Local to us, the Airbus Broughton plant, which today manufactures wings for the A350, has previously been the site for constructing the wings of the 380 Super Jumbo up until 2019. And allegedly a lot of the tooling and equipment still remains in the plant today. For airlines such as Emirates, who currently own 119 A380s, the aircraft is essential. And Tim Clark went on to say, that without these big aircraft, capacity will fall and ticket prices would likely rise. Since grounding their fleet in the 2020 health crisis, Emirates have returned a whopping 91 aircraft to the skies, showing the huge demand for these A380s. The A380 unfortunately met its production demise, caused by increasing fuel costs, maintenance costs, and high upfront costs for the airliner. But now we're seeing fuel prices drop Newer efficient engines come to the market and composite materials, efficient aerodynamic features and ultimately increasing passenger demands. So could we see the Super Jumbo return to production? The problem is uncertainty. With the fuel prices dropping over the last year, it's certainly a promising sign for the likes of the Super Jumbo jet. But how sustainable will that be? We've not heard any announcement of an A380neo or the 747 returning to production, but we think it's definitely possible. And we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let us know what you think. Would you love to see a 380 Neo or the 747 return to the skies? We'd love to hear your thoughts and we'll catch you on the next one.